Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I thought I would switch it up a little bit and give you guys a somewhat nicer change of scenery. So I just want to start off by saying that as someone who has owned a business, um, I really, really respect and appreciate all of the hard work that goes into owning a business. It's not easy, especially right now. I can't even imagine you know, working retail right now, it's so crazy. But as I say that, this video is from the perspective of a consumer and how to be a savvy shopper. So I don't understand why people are super into brand names um, like Nike and back in the day, it was like all about Aeropostale and Hollister, Abercrombie and Fitch, and that was just like, a status to wear that I don't I have no idea like what what's cool now um, but just I've never I never spent money on on those kinds of things um, from my perspective it was like okay so I'm spending 30 possibly even 50 or more dollars on this shirt or hat or whatever and I'm advertising for your company I am helping you make more money, helping the, the business make more money while I had to pay. I had to pay to help you advertise. That's just like super weird to me. I don't know, call me crazy. But if you really insist on wearing brand names and branded clothing, try to become an affiliate. Um, Affiliate marketing is really, really hot right now. Um, you, They tend to want to have people with a lot of followers, but you never know. I've reached out to brands who are um, like just starting out, and if I really liked the product, I would reach out to them, and sometimes they will offer you a discount, um, like up to 40% off, sometimes 50%. So, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna buy those clothing, you might as well get a discount if possible. So everybody's shopping online right now. I do not buy anything online unless it goes through Rakuten or um, Honey, and there's discount codes. Like I don't pay full price for anything, which leads me to my next tip: do price comparisons. Shopping online makes it super easy. You can literally put everything, like all of the items that you want to purchase, you can put them into your shopping cart. It'll total up all the tax for you, the shipping and handling. Um, I always, again, will try to find a discount code or a promo code through Rakuten or Honey or websites like that. And yeah, you definitely don't want to pay full price for anything right now. Remember, Millionaires keep their wealth because they don't pay full price, they negotiate. That leads me to my next tip is learn the art of negotiation. The best advice I've ever received in my entire life is everything in life is negotiable. Oftentimes we walk into the store and we see a price tag and assume that's it. Um, there's some purchases that we know that we can try to negotiate such as really large purchases like houses um, obviously you'd have a realtor and um, the seller side and the buyer side both have their realtors and they negotiate on each other's behalf to get the price to a, a price that is comfortable for both um, and then same with a car, you don't necessarily have um, a professional on your side, but most people don't go in to buying a car just paying like full sticker price. They try to negotiate a little bit. And we don't really think about doing this for smaller things like clothing or food. And obviously right now it's a little bit um, difficult of a, of a time to be negotiating, but you never know and again um it's it's hard right now especially because on both sides you know the the business owner especially if it's a small business they need that money 
um, to feed their family, but on your side as a consumer, you also, you know, you might only have like $20 to spend on groceries that week or, you know, so um, you have to just do what's, try to find a happy medium that's, that's good for everybody, um, but you have to do what is right for you as the consumer. I think about it from the perspective of a business is to support the consumer, um, not necessarily the other way around. Businesses started to um, businesses started up because the consumer, the general public, had a, a problem with something, and the solution was that business. You know, whether they were providing a service or um, manufacturing and providing a product, um, you know, they were coming to the rescue, so to speak. And you have to always just think of it from that perspective. And I know, especially right now, a lot of businesses um, or just individuals um, are price gouging and obviously that is illegal and just so messed up to that people are doing that. But there's always gonna be people like that, always the bad apples. But um, yeah, you just, as a consumer, you have to think about you know, can I get this product anywhere else um, for a, a, a cheaper price? And you have to also think about quality. And, um, you know, for me, with food, it took me a really long time to be comfortable spending more money on food, um, organic, and uh, I'm vegan, so vegan food is sometimes more expensive. Um, but produce is very, very cheap. So I've just been doing more, way more vegetables, which is fine because I love kale and I love my veggies. I could eat broccoli all the time. I always say don't pay full price unless it's an investment. And an investment doesn't necessarily need to just be like stocks and bonds and things most people don't understand. Um, investments could be um, a car, a reliable car to get you to and from work. Um, I remember my very first car, or my first couple cars when I was younger and had just got my license. They were awful. They were horrible. And I obviously couldn't really afford anything else, but as I got older, I just kind of had the final straw. Like, I had this car that I bought and it was nice because you know once i paid it off i wasn't having to make payments on it anymore but the maintenance the cost of maintenance was like killing me and i was i was in the auto shop like i felt like every week and it was getting to the point where okay this is disrupting my life um it's affecting how i work and how I get to and from work, which if I'm late, you know, I could get fired or, um, you know, lose hours for that day. So I just made the, the decision that, okay, I'm, I'm not going to buy cars anymore. And I actually started leasing cars and it's so awesome. Like if anything, I haven't had anything mechanically go wrong because when you lease a car, it's like they're, they're always like a year, they're brand new, I think up to a year old, um, but they're pretty much brand new when you drive off the lot. And so it, you know, and depending on how long your lease is, um, mine are usually three years. And then a lot of the times they do give you the option to purchase your vehicle at the end of the lease, or you can extend it or you can trade it in for a newer model and that's usually what I do just because, again, I don't wanna have any mechanical issues and even with a lease, um, if there is anything mechanically that goes wrong, I just bring it into the dealership and they um, fix it. But it's just, it's a hassle because, I mean, they usually give you a, like a loaner vehicle, but I haven't had to ever have one because um, I've had never, knock on wood, never had to have, um, or never had anything go wrong with any of mine.
but it's just that peace of mind and also a lot of the times like I try to negotiate free car washes into or oil changes into my lease um, so I end up spending hardly anything I mean depending on your credit I don't have the best credit right now um, well last year I got my car in June of last year and my credit was not that great so my my car payment is a little bit higher but now that my my credit is going up again like by the time my lease is done when I'm ready to like either renew or get another one or whatever um, I'll have better credit and I will be able to have a little bit more um, negotiation power so that is something that I I don't want to ever like buy a car ever again just because to me a car is an investment how you get to and from your source of income is really important it could also be like your cell phone and I'm not saying you have to go out and buy like every brand new iPhone that comes out but just something that you know maybe it's a little bit of a splurge but it's better than you know a hand-me-down phone or a phone that keeps you know your calls are dropping especially if, if your phone is a really big part of your work a lot of the time if you switch service providers um, they'll they tend to lure, try to lure you in with um, you know free upgrade or um, you know like a discounted phone like brand new or monthly payments or something I mean it kind of depends where you're at financially but there's always deals there's always negotiating power leverage they want to get your business so it doesn't hurt to ask like I always ask and um, I recently have well pro I probably won't start doing this until sometime next year maybe even the year after with all the crazy that's going on but I want to start investing more in my wardrobe and my continuing education so taking more classes and um, in my wardrobe to just like look more professional and um, you know kind of just be taken more seriously in the industry and there's again like there's always deals and um, there's always don't just go with the first you know course that you see online um, do some research and I mean even at the end of the day I'll negotiate I have no shame if you do have to spend money um, pay in cash not credit as much as possible unless you know that okay um, I gotta put like $200 on my credit card but I know that I'm gonna get a bonus at work or something and I'll be able to pay that off um, in full either before the credit card statement comes or you know but like at, when it's due if you want to be really strict you can live under the motto of like if I can't afford it now to pay in cash I can't afford it at all and I'm just not gonna buy it and um, that I think that kind of helps it to it depends on how strict you want to be with your with your budgeting really really analyze your budget to understand what you can afford and what you can't and things that are needs and things that are wants um i've mentioned this in a previous video that you know these stores they spend millions of dollars on marketing and coming up with tricks and tactics on how to get you to spend more and more money and i was and still am one of those people who when I'm standing in line at the grocery store or standing in line at Target or wherever and I see all the you know the little goodies on the shelves like next to me in the magazines and everything at checkout counter I want to just like buy it all it's like it's really hard for me to do I really need that because I mean in your mind like you can really justify a lot of a lot of things or um, you know think that you're justifying them and back in reality you don't need any of that stuff most likely it's 
lot of junk. Again, this is why I'm a really big fan of online shopping. I can put all the things I want into my cart and when it does come time to check out, I see that final price and I'm like, whoa. My budget was $50. This is like 10 times that. I'm, I gotta delete some stuff. You guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. And if you enjoy this type of content, please subscribe to my channel.